Hey guys, JT Shaver here with New Layer, and today I want to show you a budget light that seems a little too good to be true. This is the Jinbei EF260 and it's a direct competitor to the Godox SL60W and similar lights, but it has one huge advantage. Let's start with all the things that I like about this light and then we'll see if it's actually as good as it seems on paper. Features wise, this light is probably what you would expect with a Bowens mount and wireless remote control. However, the biggest selling point with this light is that it can be used with both AC and DC battery power. Even better, it uses standard Sony NPF batteries which are cheap and plentiful, and that means you can run this light continuously as long as you want, as long as you have enough batteries on hand. There are some other battery powered options out there in the 60 watt range, but they either require an adapter like the Nanlite Forza 60, or they use a proprietary battery like the Godox SLB60W. The EF260 has a three-way power switch with an off position, a battery power position, and an AC power position. The light is just as bright when using battery power as it is when you're plugged into a wall. When it comes to fan noise, this light is actually slightly quieter than the Godox SL60W and the SL150W. I'll play audio from all three lights back to back, and I boosted them all the same level and just made them louder so you can hear them more easily. The fan noise that this creates is a little lower pitch, so it's even less noticeable and it's easier to remove in post. Although in the vast majority of situations, it's quiet enough to where that's not gonna be necessary. The other surprisingly great thing about this light is the brightness and the color accuracy. I measured this light from one meter with the bare bulb using my Siconic C800 and got the following results. This light is advertised as 5500 Kelvin and I got a measurement of 5607 Kelvin which is very good. And I think I actually prefer this because most other daylight balanced lights aim for the 5600 Kelvin mark anyways. For the brightness, this light came in at 3040 lux or just under F5 at 1 50th of a second and ISO 100. For comparison, the Godox SL60W is 2460 lux or just under F4.5. So the Jinbei EF260 is one third stop brighter than the Godox SL60W. I got a CRI of 97.8 with R9, R13, and R15 values of 95.4, 99.4, and 97.3, which are all extremely good and important for accurately rendering skin tones. I also got a TLCI of 99. For the TM30, I measured an RF of 95 and an RG of 102, and this is right at the top compared to every other light that I own. The SSI versus the D55 daylight standard was 74, which is right on par with more expensive lights like the 120D and the 300D from Aperture. Lastly, I got a color correction number of zero, which means that this light has absolutely no green or magenta tint. With all that said, this light is significantly brighter and more color accurate than the Godox SL60W and outperforms other similar lights in color accuracy like the Sakani X60 and the Nanlite Forza 60. So with superior brightness and color accuracy, as well as the addition of battery power, why would you buy any other light in this category? The biggest downside to this light is gonna be the build quality. Compared to the Godox SL60W, the materials are just one step down. It's not even necessarily that it's poorly made, it's just not beefy enough to handle bigger and heavier modifiers. The light stand mount and the angle adjustment are a little small, so I think there is gonna be a limit to how big of a modifier you can put on this light. The one thing that I do like is that the mounting bracket is moved farther forward on the light, which kind of helps counteract the balancing issue, and it does take some of the stress off the mounting yoke. For this light in particular, I would recommend a softbox no bigger than 36 inches, and even then that might be pushing it depending on how heavy your particular softbox is. I only had a 24 inch and a 36 inch softbox on hand, so I wanted to find something in between that will kind of be the perfect match for this particular light. 
I found a 28 inch easy open soft box from a company called Laufus and I'm actually really surprised at how good quality it's been. It comes with two layers of diffusion as well as a grid and the grid is made out of a nicer fabric material compared to some of the other grids I have which are made out of a more plasticky material and I've actually broken a few of those with light use. The inner diffusion fabric also has a circle in the center that's double thick, so it works really well at diffusing the light. The speed ring is the heaviest part of the soft box, which again also helps with the balance and keeping the pressure off of the yoke. I was kind of skeptical because I'd never heard of this company, but I wanted something right in the middle between 24 and 36, and I've been really happy with this softbox so far. So overall, I think this is the best mid-size option for this light to give you the softest light possible without risking breaking the yoke itself. The COB on this light is exposed, so if you're shooting with the standard reflector in a dusty place or outdoors where bugs are flying all over the place, you do have to be aware that things could fly into this and get stuck to the COB and eventually might break it. If you shoot solely with a soft box, that's not really a concern. There are a few quirks with this light that might not necessarily be negative things, but they are worth knowing before picking this light up. The first thing is that this light does not come with batteries, and at this price that's to be expected, but I just know people are gonna ask me about that, so I figured I'd mention it right off the bat. It also doesn't come with a remote, although it does support wireless remote control, and the EFRC only costs $19, which is way cheaper than other remotes. Most remotes for budget lights cost $30 or $40, but sometimes they can even go up to $100 or more, so $19 is a steal. I picked up this remote so I could test it out, and it's actually really well made and about as straightforward to use as possible. The umbrella holder on this light is a friction mount instead of having a little tightening knob, but that's just personal preference, and I found it to be completely adequate. The EF260 uses two Sony NPF batteries, and they are not hot swappable, so you can't take one out and replace it and keep the light running the whole time. The light itself also won't charge the batteries while they're inserted. Even if you have it plugged in, you have to use Sony NPF battery chargers separately. If the build quality on this light was a little bit better, especially in the mounting area, it would be an obvious choice over the SL60W. It's brighter, quieter, more color accurate, and of course has the huge advantage of being able to be powered by batteries. As it stands, I still think it's a fantastic light, especially if you want something light and nimble and even be able to grab it and pick it up and use it handheld. Because you can use batteries with this light, I think the closest competitor would be the Godox SLB60W, but I think the Jinbei has a few advantages over that light. Like I've been saying, it uses NPF batteries where the Godox light uses a proprietary battery, so that's just one more cost and extra hassle to deal with. Secondly, this light is only $149, where the Godox SLB60W is $349, so this is less than half the price. So what do you think? Are the downsides to this light a deal breaker compared to the other options out there? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. I'll have links to all the lights that I mentioned in the description and they are affiliate links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra and it really helps me create more videos like this. That's it for now guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.